Alright guys, in this one we're just going to tie up a couple of loose ends from the last one. We're going to create a delete save button for the menu, and we're also going to create some text that will appear above the level opening portal so you know which level you're going into um, before you go in. So go to open level, go to main menu, and if we open up our main menu widget down here, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new button. Um, actually, you know what, we won't do that. We'll grab our old play button and we'll just copy that, click on canvas panel and then hit paste. And then we should have an exact copy of that button. And this one can be called delete save button, like that. Um, and what we might do is you might just put that down in the very corner of the screen so the player doesn't accidentally click it. Change the position relative to the corner to zero and zero. Then change the alignment relative to the corner to one and one, like that. Um, change the size to maybe 200 by 100 or something like that so it's a bit smaller and let's just change the position again to like negative 50 and negative 50 on the Y like that. Now if we go click on the text change the font size to maybe like 42 or something like that and this can be called delete 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 save maybe um, let me just show you a cool thing. Instead of playing around with the font, what we can do is we can grab a thing called a scale box. And if we drop that on the... Oh, we can't drop that on the button because it's already got a child. Grab the delete save and just put that on the canvas panel for a sec. Grab the scale box and put that on the button. And then grab the delete save text and then put that on the scale box. So now what we've got is if we change this scale box to fill up the entire size of the button what the um, text is going to do now is it's going to automatically resize to fill up that scale box and fill up the button just like that. So now we have a delete save button now we just need to add the functionality for it so if we go into event graph over here and with our delete save button selected click on clicked down here um, what we need to do is we'll say delete game in slot and that'll be the checkpoint save name, like that. Um, and then that might even be it, I think. Delete game in slot. And we might just have a little sound just so that the player knows that it's worked. So we'll say spawn sound 2D. Um, <laughs> I've got this laughing sound. <laughs> you know what? That's going to be the sound for deleting your save. <laughs> Um, if you want that, there's a link to all of the sounds used in this project file in the earlier tutorials. Just just mine through them and look in the descriptions and one of them will be bound to have it. It's in a bunch of them. Um, or I might link it to the bottom of this, depending on if I remember or not. I tend to forget, so... Um, that'll do that, and that'll delete your save. So, what we could also do is let's say we don't want this button to be there unless you actually have a save data what we could do is we could say event construct like that so when the widget is constructed we can say um, if you're going to set up save data here does save game exist we're going to copy that bit and we're just going to put this down here like that if the save game exists then do nothing if it doesn't exist then grab your delete save button like this and drag that in and then say remove from parent like that. So if there's no save game, this, the delete save button isn't going to be there because it doesn't need to be there. And after you've clicked the delete save button like this, what we're going to do is we are going to open level and the level that we're going to be opening is the main menu, which is the same level that we're already in. So it just basically resets the, the widget. Okay, so if we hit play, that's there now because we have a save data from last time. Hit delete save. There we go. That's gone. And if we hit play, this should take us to the hub and the portal should both be red because we don't have any save data. Beautiful. And now if I overlap this, this will unlock both of them, I think, because that was the end of level two. So there we go. Now we've got both of the levels unlocked just like that. Okay, so that's the delete save button um, all done. So let's just leave the main menu for now. What was the other thing I was going to do? Uh, create text above the portal so we know where we're going. Okay, so if we go back into the hub, like that, um, 
what we want to do is we want to open up the level entry BP like this and we're going to add a widget to above this portal so go to add component type in widget like that and this is just going to be called widget now we need to actually create a widget for this so if we go into a content browser user interface widget blueprint call this level name like that um, go up here to screen size, go custom, change it to 500 by 500 is usually pretty good for floating widgets overhead. Um, grab a scale box like that, attach that to the canvas panel, grab some text and then attach that to the scale box. Set the scale box to take up the entire size of the canvas panel like that and then set the offset to zero and zero so that it's full. And now our text should take up the entire size of the scale box. So now we'll grab our text and we'll make that is variable and we're going to call this portal text up here. Just like that. All right, and that's all we need to do there. So I believe we can close that down. And now in our widget here, if you go widget class, widget class and click on, what did we call it? Level name, just like that. Drag that up to a position that looks good. So maybe like there. Um, and then in the construction script, no, we can't do that in the construction script. We have to do it on begin play. Um, so what we need to do is this pull portal unlocked thing. Um, actually, you know what? Let's um, yeah, let's let's see if the portal's unlocked first. And if the portal is unlocked, grab our widget and say get user widget object. And the reason that we need this is because this has a widget component. This widget class down here is the widget that it spawns on begin play. And the widget object is a reference to that particular widget rather than the component. This is a reference to the component. So what we want to do now is we can say cast to um, level name. Oops, wrong one. Cast to level name, just like that. And off of here, we can say set portal text. Oops, sorry. No, we don't want that one. That's the wrong one. We're going to say get portal text. And then we're going to say set text like that. Okay, there we go. So now we've got that. And we're going to promote that to a variable. And this is going to be called text to display. Like that. Hit um, public like that. And if we go compile and save... That'll set the text to whatever we call it here. So let's call the default unknown like that. Um, and now if we go in here, these portals should both be unlocked. We hit play and we run around to the back here. Okay, so they've both got text that says unknown above them. Now, what we might do just quickly down here is if the portal is not unlocked, let's just... Um, can we just destroy the component? Yeah, we can. So if the portal's not unlocked, let's just destroy the widget so it doesn't say anything above it. So if we walk around here, they're both unlocked. Um, how can I quickly delete my save data? No, I've got a better idea. Let's just delete, the, um, duplicate that, add that, change the portal level to five because we definitely have it unlocked five. And if I just rotate you around so I don't have to run around the back. All right, so that one doesn't have a name on it because we deleted it, whereas these two do. Okay, so that's all good. Um, so what do we need to do now? Um, we've got the text to display, level to open. Um, I've just gone completely blank. Give me a sec. It'll come to me. I can delete that. We need to make the widget actually face the player. That's what we need to do. So, off of here, after we set the text, let's add a timeline. And this is going to be called widget face player. Because at the moment, you know how we had to walk around the back? We want the widget to actually face the player at all times. So, if we hit looping on that, um, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our widget and we're going to say set world, set world rotation, like that. And then the new rotation is going to be find look at rotation. The start is going to be the location of the widget. Get world load. Get world location. 
Oh man, this is getting cluttered. So the start location is the location of the widget and the end location is going to be get player camera manager, I think is the one we want to use. And we're going to say get world location transform component. So this is the camera that the player is using. So what's going to happen here is that it's going to find the world location of the camera and it's going to face the camera. And it's going to do that every time this runs. Okay, and this will only run if the widget is actually existing. It won't run if it's destroyed. So that's all good. Let's just collapse that to a node and call that update widget rot for rotation. Um, this can also be collapsed, and let's just call that setup widget text just to keep everything. Um, clean, you know, because it gets bloody intimidating when you're looking at lots of nodes everywhere and you don't know what things do. It's cool to just collapse it like that so you can say, oh, that sets up the widget text. Cool. Um, Alright, so if we go in here now, there we go, they're both facing us. You can see that. Now, that doesn't look too good against the sky. Um, let me just move them up a bit because they're a bit too low as well. Move them up like that. If you wanted to change the color of them, you could go into... Um, where's that level name? Down like that. If you click on text block, this has a color and opacity thing like that. So at the moment, that's um, white. I believe if portal text is variable, we could also go into level entry BP and in setup widget text, we could also grab our portal text and we could say, oh my god, we're frozen. Please don't freeze. How's our recording going? 11 minutes, that's not too bad. Ugh, I wonder if you can still hear me while it's frozen. Okay, are we good? We're good. So if we grab our portal text like that, we could say set color and opacity and hook that into the execution chain as well. And the color and opacity, we can just promote that to a variable and just call that text color and opacity. Opacity 2. That's fine. And the default is going to be white. I think is probably the best one. Okay. So, for these guys though, we can... Oh, we need to make that public down there. So we can change that for each of the instances. So now, this will be accessible down here. And we can change that to black for one. And because it's got the white sky, it'll make it more obvious. So there we go. That's a bit more visible. Um, And they face the player. So... I think that's all that we needed to do here. I guess we could do the same thing for the um, finished portal over here. Um, we could just quickly tidy that up. So if we go to our... Um, where is it? Level end BP. Or we could do this in another video, you know. I'm Yeah, I'm going to leave this here. We might do that in another video if we need to. Because you know how to do it now. It's just the same thing for that. So you can go ahead and do that yourself if you wanted to. But... I'll show you how to do it in another one anyway. Alright, we're going to leave that there. Let me know if you have any questions about this one, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.